Hey, Yetta, do you know where a dog sheds the most? I d- don't. On the furniture. Oh, my. Move it forward with the Decker team. Move it forward together with the Decker team. Okay, so welcome to another episode of Life's Inside Track. I'm Yetta Decker. And I'm Ken Decker. And we're excited that we get to come together and share techniques, thoughts, tips, tools, and even some tactics that we all need. We all deserve you, I, and everyone so we can turn our house into home where our families thrive and we live the best life possible. This episode, we're going to consider how do we actually make our home feel like a home rather than just a house. Yeah, what's interesting about that is I've shown thousands and thousands of homes. No, over no, the last... tens of thousands. Okay. I actually did the math one day. This is probably five years ago. And it was in excess of 100,000 homes that we each have shown over our tenure in the real estate industry. Wow, that's a lot. That's not like online. That's not just perusing them. That's not just looking at the stats. That's actually in. It's no wonder we've worn out several cars. But what's and lots interesting of pairs of is, shoes, huh? Yeah, have you ever felt this when you walk oh. into a home? Mm. You can feel the left energy from the previous people, whether it's vacant or not. You tend to sense, as soon as you walk in the door, what the family dynamics, the relationship is like. Is the house full of love? Was there some anger there? Was there divorce? Well, I think for me, it's, I don't know, sometimes maybe I feel a sense. If it's uncared for, I think it's unhappy, but that's not necessarily true. Some of the most unkept houses I've seen have tons of joy going on inside them. Mm -hmm. It's more the evidence for me of things that wouldn't likely happen in a happy house. And that is like when we bought ours, holes in walls, holes in doors, where you can tell that it was a fist, not just the door handle. You know, sometimes the door handle swings hard, there's a gust of wind, and if you don't have a door stop, you get a hole Mm -hmm. where the door handle was. That's kind of the normal, potentially, wear and tear in a home where you just maybe haven't put a long enough door stop on, Mm -hmm. right? That could happen any day. You fall, you kind of collide into the door, and now you, you get a hole in the wall. It's not those. It's when there's holes in the backs of doors or walls or things now I have evidence that there was sadness going on yeah. in that place, right? Yeah, but that's true evidence. Yes. Sometimes it comes without seeing the evidence, and then the proof comes later. Like, I might walk into a house and go, oh, this feels empty, even though it's full of furniture. And and then I open the fridge door, and there's no perishable food in it. Then I know the house is empty. Right. Or the person never eats at home. <laughs> right. Well, either or. And so we got to be careful not to draw conclusions based on a thing mm. that we see. Yeah. And yet I can tell you the size of the house, the opulence of the house, the location of the house, the fit and finish in the house, even the furniture in the house has zero to do with whether it's a happy home or not. Yeah, Absolutely. And when we say happy home or not, we're saying the inhabitants of the home are having a good time living in the space. Mm -hmm. And it's fascinating. Sometimes, like I've seen homes where, you know, they go, well, why is this person selling? And I I go in the, and I have the sense, right, of what's going on. And I go into the primary bedroom and I look in the closet and there's only one set of clothes. So it's, it's maybe a separation, maybe a death, maybe... Who knows? Maybe it was always a single person that lived there. But generally, you get that feeling. And interesting, little things can change a home, like adding a plant, adding some life to a a vacant home, some flowers. So I think part of what we're saying is, and, and this is a relational show, so we're talking about how relationship shows up in evidence in a house. Mm -hmm. Right. And so if you're saying, yeah, but I just don't like plants. I just, you know, I prefer not to have, I have a black thumb and I'm going to hurt and kill any plant. Get it. 
And if your home is on the market, you might want to put something in so people don't draw unnecessary, untruthful conclusions. Mm. Like there's even that whole mindset to go, okay, what do I want people to experience? What do I want to experience? I mean, I finally said, I prefer plants over flowers, mostly flowering plants over cut flowers, if we say that, except that they come from my garden. If they come from my garden, that's bonus, bonus, bonus. Hmm. But I prefer a potted plant that has flowers on it. So there are a couple of types that last a really decent length of time. And I've given myself the luxury to say, when I forget to water it, or I'm overwatered and it dies, I buy a new one. It's still a fraction of the cost of having constantly cut flowers in the house. So maybe it's just a matter of cutting yourself some slack to go, yeah, I have a black thumb. I kind of do. Mm. And be okay with that and have fun with it anyway. Yeah. Like how can you bring the best out of it for you? Yeah. And I think when we're talking relationships and a home, it doesn't matter whether that home is tiny mm. or the home is really large. The, the point is, if you have family dynamics that work, they should work in any home you move to, any property. But I have seen where, you know, I was looking for a client. Do you remember? Yeah, I do. Dan and his wife, and they were, they were looking for larger properties. They were moving to Ottawa area from out of town. And I showed them some beautiful homes. And then in the end... They picked a small home. They came from a small home, and they picked a small home, even though – how many children did – Lots. Yeah, lots. It was a lot. Anyway, they felt comfortable in a particular style of home where their family would be close-knit. Right. And so you get to decide for yourself, like, what works for you? It doesn't have to be what we think is brilliant, because I was shocked at first. I showed them, we both showed them a fair number of homes, and I showed them some where I thought, this is it. Like, I can see spaces for all the kids, and they can have their own entertainment area, as well as the parents could have their entertainment area. And there's a bedroom for everybody, no more sharing. And at the end of the day, that isn't what they wanted. So just knowing of yourself what works for you. Forget all the output out there, like all the things people put out that they think should be for you. You Think about your family dynamic. How does it work? Are you game playing family? And that's part of how you create closeness. Just being in proximity can create conversation. I know it certainly has for us. Just being in proximity creates conversation, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. creates closeness. And so when we're talking about the telltale signs in a house, think about what do you want it to emit and then create the environment to emit that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we, like we live in a very big house for two of us. Mm -hmm. And yet we spend a lot of time together. We do. Yeah. So it's not that the size, it's the relationship that will denote how you live in this space. Mm, yeah. So the smallest house can take, you know, can take the best, can be the best home when joy lives within its walls. Mm, I love that. And if you're thinking, I need to know more, book a 15 minute strategy call, a little clarity session, and we'll help you decide whether it's the space that's not working, or maybe we'll give recommendations to a professional that can support you in your family dynamics. Hmm. So we're grateful to be your partners in moving forward on the journey of wealth, wisdom, and worth. Moving forward with the Decker team.